A guy is walking down a busy little street. The sun is already setting. The sky is bright pink. The guy's name is Liu Shengshai. He is 18 years old and about to face the hell known to all as the college entrance exam. But for him, the college entrance exam is just a moment for bookworms to show off all their skills. About him, his mother has long since given up hope. To her, he's a little hikikomori son. Because of her job, the boy lives alone in the house. Now he's just coming home with a bag in his hand. Hikikomori, or simply hiki, is a Japanese term for people who withdraw from social life and often seek an extreme degree of social isolation and seclusion due to various personal and social factors. Such people are often unemployed and live as dependents of relatives. Luo Shishai opened the door, taking off his sneaker, and went home. He's wrong. Technical he does not live alone. Turning on the light, he notified his darlings of his arrival, because he has wives. Then he went into the kitchen and put the groceries in. The weather today was quite comfortable. Because of the supermarket, it was crowded. Many kinds of foods had come in lately, so he bought some new flavors and to try out, such as instant noodles with cuttlefish flavor. The guy paced toward the chifferobe. Standing in front of it, he apologized for making him wait. In the shelves of the chifferobe are various figures of beautiful girls. There is even a maid, a magician, and a sorceress. Some show cute hand gestures and premium facial expressions. They are his wives. Tonight he will have dinner with Rem Chan. For dinner are the same instant noodles. They're with the lid closed, laying his head on the table waiting for the noodles, and the figurine is standing next to him. In fact, even though he has many wives, he sometimes feels emptiness, a feeling of depression. He has hardly any flirting skills. He's an otaku boy from nowhere. Otaku is a person who is passionate about something, usually used to refer to fans of anime and manga. He was so despondent. Then suddenly he began to rage lying on the floor. He thinks it's all his mother's fault for giving him such a strange name. As soon as he thought about it, tears accumulated on the corners of his eyes. It upsets him so much, he is ready to weep at his strange name. From the translator, in Chinese, his name sounds like the names of different metals on the periodic table of Mendeleev. Suddenly, music started playing. It was the melody of a bell. Why, why, why does the rain drip on the puddles? I'm walking through these puddles. Maybe someone needs me. The wind is blowing at my back. Have you forgotten about me? Luo Shengshi involuntarily picked up the phone and answered. An incoming call from an unknown number. The man asked if he was Lu. It's from the outlet store. A courier has arrived and asks to open the door. Then to sign for receipt, the guy takes the box. But he looks at it without an ounce of emotion, maybe even indifferent. Taking a stationary knife in his hands, he unlocks the sticker. Then opened the box. In the box was a Pineapple 11 phone. The guy had ordered it a few days ago. Now he would have a brand new phone. He connected the phone to the computer to transfer the data. Everything was complete. Now all he had to do was wait for the transfer to complete. He must have been tired, so he decided to take a nap. Someone was calling him in his sleep. It was also a little different. Not Luo Sheng Shai, but Lao Sheng Shai. Again and again. It was noisy. The boy's dream was disturbed. When he was called again, he opened his eyes. All around him was darkness. It was unclear where he was. Then a voice asked if he longed for superpowers. It was not clear where it was coming from and who was talking to him. The boy takes his words as a joke. He has, after all, long graduated from kindergarten. But suddenly, there was a blindingly bright light. A blonde girl held out her hand to him. She was dressed all in white, like a goddess. Her beauty made the boy blush. The telephone alarm clock rings. Wakey, 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 while you're spinning your curlers. I have to be at work by 9 o'clock. Why did I wind you up? All this is already giving the guy a headache. It's noisy. It's a huge mistake to leave the alarm on on weekends. You wake, wake, wake while you're spinning your curlers. It's 9 o'clock for school and you have to go. Lu Shangxi abruptly turned off the alarm clock. There was light coming from the phone. A magic circle appeared. When he opened his eyes, his hand felt so soft and warm and comfortable. And with his hand he was holding the sweet girl's thigh. He was just dumbfounded by it. To top it off, his face was red. 
and the girl looked at him with an uncomprehending face. The boy asked who she was and how she came into his house, and the girl said she should be the one asking the questions, calling him master. Then she asked him how she became like that. The boy was shocked to be called master. He thought she liked to play BDSM games, and confusedly told her that she might be drunk because she got in the wrong house. Also told her not to call him master. Even though he's happy, he doesn't have the money to play that kind of game. Also tells her that she can find another guy to play with her. For that he is sorry, so he apologizes. His words touched the girl, her eyes filled with tears, and Lu Shengshai doesn't understand why she is acting this way. She is really sad. She started to cry. Tears are flowing in streams. The master really doesn't recognize the girl, and he sees her as just a strange girl. She also says that this is all after he used her for so long, and he still doesn't understand anything. Now she calls him master. Her handyman got a new phone yesterday. She suggested that now he wants to throw it away. He began to despair. This is getting more and more ridiculous. He asks to be allowed to say a few words. In short, he doesn't know her at all. He hasn't even met her before. She was in his room when he woke up and who knows what she was trying to do to him. He thinks he'd better call the police to solve this problem. The guy started looking around and searching for the phone with his eyes. However, it was not in its supposed locations. When he noticed it, it turned out to be new. It's unclear what happened. He can't find it anywhere. Last night, he had a very strange dream. A dream where a goddess held out her hand to him. He finally realized that the girl who was suddenly in his room was his lost phone. Then she suddenly began to sing. It's that ringing tune. Why? Why does the rain drip on the puddles? I walk through these puddles. Maybe someone needs me. The wind is blowing at my back. Have you forgotten about me? Luo Shangshai realized it was his phone ringtone. He pointed his finger at her and called her a bad girl who stole his phone. So he demands his phone back. The girl is a little surprised. She then asked if the owner wanted to answer or hang up. He instantly says to answer and return the phone. The boy warns her not to even think about running. If she does, the police will catch her. The girl came close to him. She put her hands on his shoulder. Then she fell on top of him and kissed him. It was as if the boy had been doused with paint. He has no idea what's going on. Liu Shengshai became nervous. It was unclear why the girl was sucking on him. He reflexively closed his eyes and pushed her away, telling her to keep her composure. And when he slowly opened them, he held her breasts with his hands. The flustered boy instantly recoiled with his hands. Afterward, he tentatively apologized. Both of their faces turned red. Then he thought about it. Why did he apologize at all? She had kissed him first. But still, that wonderful kiss was the first for him. From such strange thoughts, yellow leaves began to fall around the boy, like in the fall. He was honored to be a magician. In his twelfth year, he heard something amazing. Someone had heard from his uncle that if he didn't have sex when he was 25, he could become a wizard. This conversation couldn't help but get the guy's attention. He sat quietly, but abruptly turned his head toward the conversation. He dropped his lollipop. Even though he was a high school student then, he could never have imagined such a thing. He really wanted to be a magician, so he tried to summon the creature somehow. But now he looks back at the girl and just keeps quiet, not knowing what to say to her. She looks at him and calls him son. She asks if he is listening to her. If he does, give him a sign. But he is in his deep thoughts. He thinks this is a blessing to him, doesn't seem like something bad. Well, the mother's patience is wearing thin. She shouts at the top of her voice, calling him a little shit, so that he listens carefully. Now the boy finally reacts. He is still perplexed. It really was his mother's voice. She asked him if he was talking to anyone else. Luo Shengshe was a little hesitant and denied what she said. He told her that he was talking to himself and there was no hottie here. He couldn't control himself completely. That his mother's voice was coming from that girl's mouth puzzled him. He would be sure to talk to her later. Also, her posture is exactly like his mother's. She holds her displeased face with her hand, grunts, and asks if he is tired by any chance. She suggests that he's been hanging out playing games all night. The guy waves his hand and says he hasn't been playing, he's been studying all night. After asking why she called and what she wanted from him, 
The mother became abruptly angry. Her emotions really reflected on the girl's face. She grabbed the boy by the ear and pulled. His mother called him an ungrateful bitch and asked if she could call when she wanted to. That hurt. It's a lot like his mother, she can be very scary when she's angry. The guy replied that she could call him at any time. Then he asked her to let go. He promised to do whatever she wanted. She slowly let go of his ear. Afterwards, the girl sat down on the table with her arms and legs crossed. She told him to ask a neighbor if she rented an apartment. They didn't have her phone number to ask, so that was his assignment. The neighbor's door is behind their apartment. She told him to make it quick. Liu Shengshai told her to consider that he had already done it. That was all for today. The mother said goodbye to her son and turned off the phone. The girl who had just recently been grumbling took on her sweet persona. She began to call the guy master again, letting him know that the call was over. The guy suddenly stopped her. He figured it all out that this girl was his cell phone. The girl who appeared out of nowhere is his phone that turned into her. And if this is really his phone, then it wasn't a dream at all when the woman gave him the power. He decided to find out what he could do. His phone became a girl, so everything he touches becomes a girl. At least, that's what he thinks. If he has this ability, nothing matters to him anymore. To make sure of this, he took a nice figurine in his hand. He decided to try it first on this figurine. He raised his right hand and said something like a spell. The soul flew to heaven. Then he quickly lowered his hand and touched the figure with two fingers. But nothing happened. The guy didn't understand why it did, and the girl didn't understand what he was doing. Nothing happened. He thinks he made a mistake somewhere, or there are some conditions of use. A girl walked up to him and asked if he was okay. From the fact that he looked confused, she reached out her hand to touch his shoulders, but the guy turned and put his hands on her shoulders. He tells her that if she really is his phone, she should know what files he keeps in it. She's a little embarrassed and shakily replied. According to her, they are pictures of girls in revealing clothing. The file path is biology homework folder, biology 2, she can definitely tell biology is in there, stop fumbling with her biology, etc. Now he's convinced that she really is his phone. She knows everything. The girl then asked why her host kept these files of homework. Do these pictures serve as study material? His face all darkened. He told her not to say anything. This was going to be a disaster. The atmosphere around the girl has changed. She assumes the host wants to learn more about women's clothing. He catches her words and justifies himself with it. Liu Sheng Shai wants to know more about women's clothes. That's how he was able to get away with it. And the knave girl rejoices at his answer. It looks like he was able to turn the tables. Both sat down on the floor. The guy asked the girl's name. But she doesn't have one. She says that if the owner wishes, she can give her a name. He was surprised that he could give her a name and began to think seriously about the name. And the girl waits in anticipation. She has straight black hair. He likes a nine girls with hair like that. Decided to choose an appropriate name among them. Finally decided to name her Nikki. It was a wonderful name that she liked. She was very happy about it. She glowed. Nikki loves the name because her owner named her Nikki. She hugged him and thanked him. The boy blushed a little. He suddenly began to feel so happy. Suddenly, he heard someone knocking on the door and the sound of a key. But this was strange because only his mother had nags. Liu Shengxi grabbed the girl and quickly ran to the closet. He hid her in it, telling her to wake here. She must not, by any means, make a sound. Then she asked if he wanted to put her on hold. He turgidly said that's what he wanted. She noticed his uneasiness. Closing the door, the boy hurried to the door. It was unclear why his mother had come so early. He opened the door. Behind the door stood a beautiful woman with brown hair and dark green eyes. Luo Shengxi asked why she was here. Luo Shengxin's mother enters the house. Taking off her shoes, she asks why he is so exhausted. And he is still at a loss. He tells her he just woke up and got dressed. She doesn't trust his words much. Then the guy asks why she came in so quickly, even though she called recently. She confidently walks in, asking if she can't come in. She also asks if she interrupted his entertainment. The guy says he didn't do anything wrong. His mother puts the bag on the floor and packs a sniff, as if she smells something suspicious. 
She can smell the girl in his room, a very intense scent. A strong shiver ran through the guy's entire body. He excused himself, saying it might be the smell of a new air freshener. He was struck by his mother's terrifyingly accurate sense of smell. She looks at him with her dubious gaze. She seems to be pondering something. Luckily, Mickey was hiding. The boy looked toward the closet. In front of the closet lay a blue shoe with a bow on it. Those were Nikki's shoes. He didn't even notice how or when her shoe fell. It lies in a place where few people look, but even so, the boy is anxious and trembling violently. He must hide it quickly, or she will find it. While his mother stood with her back to him, he approached the shoe with quiet steps. Just as he touched it, his mother turned around, but he managed to hide it behind his back. His mother suspected that he was so suddenly seated in front of the closet, with his hands hidden behind it. He told her that the air was much cleaner there than anywhere else. Afterward, he laughed strangely. His mother asked if he wasn't feeling well. The boy is nervous. He should be just nervous. His mother guesses. She's sure the bastard is hiding something. It's obvious he didn't just sit in front of the closet. She's determined to expose him. The mother took that blue girl figure and smirked slyly. She powerfully threw her back against the wall. Liu Shengshai reacted instantly. His waifu. He barely caught the figure. It was dangerous. He almost died of a heart attack. But suddenly he thought about it and realized that it was his mother's devious plan. Quietly, he turned on her. He already knew her intentions and darkened at these thoughts. She sensed that the boy was very strange today. She found both pairs of shoes. Twisting them with her finger, she tells him what kind of shoes they are. His mother already knows about his excuses. She tells him just not to say he bought the wrong ones or it's his fetish. The guy is cornered. He doesn't even know how to justify himself or what words to choose to dispel his doubts. His mother puts her hand on the closet door, as if pointing out to him the edge of the clothes that are stuck. She thinks the answer to her question is behind that closet. The mother's instincts are very precise. Her actions make the boy even more anxious. His mother opened the closet doors to see what he was hiding. The boy tried to stop her, but it was too late. She saw the girl sitting inside the closet. Both don't understand what's going on. And Liu Shengshai doesn't know what to do. He withdrew her in confusion, and she sighed heavily and grabbed his shoulder with her hand. According to her, a man should act like a man, be a man of culture. She tells him she will surrender, and that she will visit him more often when she gets her bonus, wiping away her tears with her handkerchief. The boy is puzzled. His mother doesn't understand. He tells her it's a misunderstanding, and it's not what she thinks. And his mother tells him not to lie to her. She's his mother, how can she not know? The woman tells her to understand. He's never had a relationship with girls. But the fact that a beautiful girl suddenly shows up in his room seems like a kidnapping for her. The guy tells her that she really doesn't understand anything. Suddenly, her spirit burst into flames. And again, she repeated her words about how a man must be clear about his mistakes. The atmosphere grew hot. He took a fan. The guy had done a terrible evil. Nikki takes his mother's hand and tells her that her master did not kidnap anyone. She asks her not to blame her master. The girl's words made her even more indignant. She thought they had even begun to role-play BDSM games. Her mother turned to the boy at a pace and told him that in order to change his evil nature, she had to turn him into the asylum. Liu Shengshai got goosebumps. He immediately started introducing doctors and big shots. Sending him there is a big mistake. If they realize Nikki is his phone, it is impossible to even imagine what they will do. There was no choice. The boy sits down on his knees in front of his mother and clings to her leg. He tells her it's a misunderstanding. Nikki he introduces as his girlfriend. The mother is just in shock. She questioningly asks him if it's true. And he tells her that it all started recently. The expression on his mother's face changed. She asked him then why his girlfriend was hiding in the closet. The boy replied that it was because he hadn't told her. He was afraid she would get all worked up. She sighed in relief as if she trusted his words. The woman asked if her son had hit the girl, and she denied it and said that her master was polite to her. The boy was finally able to fool his mother. He was now a little calmer, and his mother patted the girl on the head and told her to come see her more often.
If she came, she would treat her to all sorts of sweets. Nikki happily agreed. After all this, the woman decided to leave. Before she left, she told the boy not to drag it out with the neighbor. According to her, she had not seen her son for a long time, and he had a very beautiful girlfriend. She assumes he has changed a lot, and he laughed lightly in response. Finally, she gave him something and told him not to be irresponsible. After she left, the boy decided to see what it was, and it was a box of Bana condom. His face got all red. He screams asking his mom what it means, and she smirks in the shower. She must have imagined them making love and Nikki telling him to be gentle with her. Luo Shengshai threw the box on the pillow that was on the ground. No one knows what his mother was thinking. This is not something a mother should give her son. Her action irritates him, and Nikki looks at this box with interest. She even touches it with a stick, then she even bit it. Now that's what dumbfounded the guy. He took the box right away and told her she couldn't eat it, and she just didn't know what it was. So she asked him what it was. It sounded to her like chocolate. The guy blushed and looked away. All he said was that it wasn't chocolate. The girl shouldn't know what it is, so he told her it wasn't a good thing. She was a little surprised. Then suddenly a gurgling sound came out of the guy's stomach. Apparently, he had fallen asleep last night without having eaten lunch. He cast his eyes over the noodles from yesterday. He opened the lid to eat it. However, it became disgusting. Just looking at it takes away his appetite, and the girl doesn't know what's going on. It is better to take a new portion. Suddenly, another gurgling sound was heard. That sound came from Nikki's belly. The guy turned to her, and she was holding her stomach. He asked her if she was hungry. She didn't understand the word and said she felt empty in her stomach. Obviously, she was hungry. Luo Shengxi asked what she wanted to eat, but suddenly he thought about it. After all, if she is his phone, it is unclear whether ordinary food can help her. But she is like a human being now. He thought she might have organs too. That one needs to be checked out. Luo Shengxi told her to open her mouth. The girl asked again, as if she did not understand his words. She opened her mouth, asking if she did. He ducked his head slightly and asked to let her see. Her mouth is the same as a normal person's. Her teeth are straight, like coral stones. Looking at her open mouth, the boy began to blush. He should focus. He shook his head and began to think more clearly. Even after checking her, it is not clear whether she can be considered human and whether she can eat human food. But nevertheless, he decided to give them. He filled the table with all sorts of dry foods. She doesn't have to wait. She is free to choose whatever she wants. Today he pays for everything. He also began recommending the best ones to her. First he recommended eating the crawfish-flavored potato chips, then the spicy ones. He is pleased with himself, therefore standing confidently in front of her. And she rustles and rustles. At the end, something caught her eye. She shows one bag to the guy and asks if she can eat it, but her choice didn't appeal to the guy. She chose a small cooked rabbit. Sympathy seems to attract sympathy. The guy, with a bright smile, let her eat it. Mickey bit into the package and could not eat it in any way. She called out to her master and told him that she could not bite it. Liu Shengxi came to his senses in confusion. He told her she couldn't eat the package. Afterwards, he took the package from her hand and opened the package, telling her to open it. She marveled as he poured a few balls into her palm. The guy told her to eat them. Mickey took one in her hands and ate it. He asked her if she liked it. Then she happily said it was very good. Then the guy gave her the whole bag and told her to eat as many as she wanted. She sweetly and joyfully ate them like a little child. The boy took a small jelly in his hands, assuming that the girl should like it, too. Suddenly, a bright magical circle appeared in the room, blinding the eye. Liu Shengxi closed his eyes with his hand, and when he opened them, there was that bag of cooked rabbit and his old phone lying on the floor. Clearly, it was Nikki. The guy sat down on his knees and called out her name. Liu Shengxi puts the phone on the table and looks at it. It's not clear what happened and why everything has suddenly gone backwards. He assumes it's a temporary limitation. He tried the lie move figure, but nothing worked. The guy is sure there must be some requirement. Looking at his hand, he thinks about something. He remembers picking up the phone with his right hand, and then he turned into Nikki.
The boy took the notebook in which he wrote down his secrets. There was written about the peculiarities of Shen Shi's power, one, to which he is concerned to become human, two, he can use his ability once a day, three, there is a time limit, the duration of which is not yet known. Having written these rules, decided to remember them and follow them. He is thinking of adding new ones soon. So, the first time Mickey became human was in the morning when he woke up. Relying on the second rule, his ability is renewed at 12 o'clock, or perhaps when he wakes up. He checked his watch. It's 10 o'clock. We have to check when he wakes up. So he decided to sleep and went to bed. But even with his eyes closed, he couldn't sleep for long. He turned from side to side, but he couldn't fall asleep. He opened his eyes and sat up. He probably just wasn't tired, so he didn't want to sleep. In order to do that, he needed to keep himself awake with something to do. However, he does not want to read books. He thinks about going to Station B, but changes his mind because there is nothing new there. Suddenly, the napkins on the table caught his eye. The expression on his face changed. His face turned red. He thought about getting some exercise. Then he shook his hand to get them, but remembered something. Mickey's phone now and he's lying next to it. This awakened a conscience in him. He was overly eager, suddenly bored. Since he couldn't do anything, he took the soft, cute doll. He decided to just try to fall asleep with it. Let his princess keep him company. So he put it next to his pillow. After that, he fell fast asleep, drooling. When he was sound asleep, something disturbed him. The magic circle reappeared in the room. The guy woke up and stood up sharply from his seat. It's not clear what happened yet. Some sleepy girl tells him that the gentleman is noisy. She wiped her eyes with her hand, but it was her large breasts and thin waist that attracted attention first. The girl was in light pajamas, which allowed her beautiful body shape to be seen. She also had a green hair color. Lu Shengshai didn't realize what had now become human, but the sight of her made his nose bleed. She was wearing his blanket. When he noticed this, he realized that it was past midnight. The guy hurriedly started looking for his phone. He turned it on and looked at the time, just as he thought it was past midnight. Then the girl turned to him again as a gentleman and asked if he was sleepy. She asked him to sleep together. Sleeping with a nice girl is cool, but the guy politely refused. All he told her was that it wasn't nice, bleeding from the nose. Oh, and his face turned red again. The girl pounces on him and hugs him tightly. She tells him just to hug her, the way he always did when he slept. The fact that she hugged him tight made the boy gasp. In addition, her big breasts were squeezing, covering his nose. Lu Sheng She quickly pushed away the girl's hands with his hands. He was just in shock. After pushing her away, he sighed in relief. Then he began to try to get his breathing in order. The girl looked gentle, but had a hell of a lot of power. She started yawning and laid down on the bed, telling the guy that she would sleep first if he didn't go to bed. And she did go to sleep. Wow, the guy is even more surprised. She's sound asleep and he's thinking things over. It is unknown why his ability recharges after zero o'clock. If it's a passive skill, he can't use it when he wants to. This way of using it is really cheating for him. He actually wanted to transform Nikki. As soon as he thought of her, he started imagining her in front of his eyes. He miscalculated. It makes him sad. The boy picked up the phone and began to cry. The girl noticed him crying and woke up. She asked why her master was crying, and he bluntly said it was because of her. Now he can't transform Nikki, and she also took over his bed. But his words only awakened the love in her. She touched the guy's finger and told him he was interesting. That touch made him blush again. She tells him not to think too much. According to her, working at night is very bad for his body. That's why she asked to sleep together. The girl hugged him from behind, and her breasts pressed against the boy's body making him even more embarrassed. He agreed, but asked if he could sleep without her. She didn't understand him. After all, they always slept together. She told him not to tell her that he didn't like the way he looked. The guy completely denied it and made it clear. She is his blanket, of course they can sleep together. But now she has turned into a girl, and a guy and a girl are not the same thing. He explained to her that they can't sleep together and asked if she understood that. And it's hard for a girl to understand that. She just doesn't care. 
When she speaks, her breasts move in a way that makes her embarrassed. Liu Shengshai is no exception. He tried to cover his eyes with his hands, but he still looks like he's been doused with paint. He asks her to speak clearly. He also asks her to stop shaking. It makes him dizzy. But she thought he was sleepy, so she told him to come up to her and fall asleep. She showed the bed by hitting it against him. So they went to bed together. But the boy suddenly spoke. He asked about her name. And this girl didn't have one. She asked if her master wanted to call her something. Then he hesitated a little. She had turned out of his covering. So he would call her Beigi. After thinking about it, he came up with that name. Then he asked the girl how she liked that name. But she will like any name her master gives her. He laughed lightly in response. They were lying together and it seemed too close for him. When he told the girl about it, she said it was because she liked the way he smelled. According to her, her master never hit her. The guy didn't understand her words. Then she said he didn't beat her like the auntie who came by the other day. She used to beat her with a battering ram. It's a good thing he's lazy. Sometimes he's too lazy to even pick up a blanket. His mother often kicked the dust off his bed. BG grabbed the boy's hand and placed it on her chest. He was at a loss, his face reddening again. She asks him to promise not to hit her ever. Liu Shengxi made the promise, bleeding from his nose. For his promise, the girl called him the best lord ever. The guy looks at his right hand, which he touched to the girl's chest. If possible, he would like a more practical skill. For example, to fly, to read minds, to teleport, etc. Thinking about it, he sighed heavily. Then he closed his eyes to sleep. He was already sound asleep. Suddenly, she put her arm and leg around the boy. Her breasts pressed against the boy's body. Now he really couldn't sleep. Beiji is sound asleep. Her breath tickles the boy's ear. She lies like this in a hug. Liu Shengxi has nothing to do but quietly endure it. Even so, though uncomfortable, he also sleeps soundly. His mouth is drooling. Suddenly, a magic circle appeared. The girl disappeared. A blanket appeared in her place and covered the bed. He stood up abruptly, not understanding what had happened. Looking back at the blanket, it was clear that she had turned back. It was too sudden, so it shocked the boy. The action of his ability was short-lived. As he thought about the incident, his head hurt badly. Afterwards, he collapsed on the bed with no control over his body. It was a complication of the illness. Now he was completely exhausted. So he just fell asleep from dizziness. It's morning. The sun's rays fill the room with light through the window. And Liu Shengxi sleeps soundly, hugging his blanket. The light hit his eyes and he woke up. He slowly opened his eyes and realized that it was already dawn. Getting out of bed, the first thing he did was go to the bathroom. He sighed heavily. There he did his business and pondered his ability. If the action slept twelve nights, it was unlikely to work in the bathroom now. After washing my hand, I looked again at my right hand. The right hand activates the power, but it is also part of the body and does not change. In other words, the force must not act on itself. Next, breakfast. He went to the refrigerator and got milk. The guy still keeps thinking about his power. If the power doesn't work on himself, it probably will on other things. He also doesn't know if the power has any effect on other living things. He has a rather modest breakfast. A glass of milk and a muffin. He proceeds to eat, first saying the prayer word Ammon. While he was eating breakfast, strange noises were heard outside, which distracted him. There was such a noise, though the neighbors on the right side hadn't been there for a long time. Then the boy remembered his mother's errand. He had completely forgotten her request. If he didn't do it, that woman would be furious. The boy opened the door to look at the neighbors and there were several guys in the same uniform dragging things. When Liu Shengxi asked them if they were helping with the hauling, one guy said yes and apologized for the trouble. And he waved his hand and said it was no big deal and it was nothing. The guy went into the house and closed the door. Now someone new was moving into the apartment on the right side. But as soon as he closed it, a scratching sound was heard. At first the guy didn't understand what it was or where this unpleasant sound was coming from. But when he opened the door, he was convinced that it was a white, cute cat. He crouched down and started stroking it. He also asked where it came from. Then someone in a loud voice called for coffee. It was a schoolgirl. 
The cat turned out to have run away from her. The girl told the guy it was her cat. They had just moved in, they hadn't settled down yet, and she accidentally didn't look after it. Liu Shengshai told her it was no big deal. Then he asked if she was his new roommate and was wearing her high school uniform. He told her that he was once a high school student. As they were talking, the door of the apartment next door closed. The girl tensed up and got a little gloomy because the key was inside. But she had to leave the cat somehow, and on top of that she was late for school too. Then the girl turned to the boy and asked him to look after her cat, calling him brother. She and her cat looked at him with such pleading, glistening eyes that he could not refuse. Thus he agreed to keep coffee at his house. The girl gave him the cat and said goodbye to him. She apologized for the trouble and thanked him. Afterwards she went to school in a hurry. Liu Shengxi said goodbye smiling at her. Then they went into his house with the cat. Both their facial expressions changed. The guy started stroking the cat's head. She's a cat. This is just right for her. She seemed to be enjoying it. Liu Shengxi smirked after he closed the door. He embraced the cat and began to shake his head, touching its fur. After all, he's a cat person too, though once. His action makes the cat sick. But she stares at him in silence. The guy took a cat-shaped toy out of the box and let the cat play with it. It was a toy she really liked. She immediately began to cuddle and play with it. The guy watched her and gave her a bowl full of cat food. He also gave her a bowl of water. He called for the cat to swoop down. Her eyes sparkled when she saw the food. She quickly walked over to the food. Her speed and appetite is amazing, though at first frightening. Coffee is lovingly eating her food. She seemed really hungry. The cat ate quickly and started licking her paws. It looks so cute. Even Luo Shangxi melted in front of her. He looks at her sweetly, his face turning red. That's to be expected, considering how cute the cat is. She is very cute. You can't get away from the sight of her washing. Coffee was quietly washing, but suddenly she started walking back and forth as if she was looking for something. The guy didn't understand what that might mean. Then after a few seconds, he made a guess. The cat sat down on the floor and trembled a little. The guy realized that she wanted to go to the bathroom. She mounted back as if to confirm his words. Just discouraged, he told her to wait for him. The cat quietly did its business in the box that Liu Shengshai brought. Next, as before, beautifully walks away. And the guy has to clean up after her. The box stinks terribly. He was disgusted to clean it up, so he covered his nose with his hand. Such a cute kitty, and she doesn't know what she's eating because she smells so bad. Even though it was disgusting, he cleaned it up. The guy sighed heavily. It wasn't easy for him. It's already boring him. Liu Shengxi finished his business just watching the cat play with the toy. Taking care of a pet is not easy. Afterwards, he thinks about his other business, or rather the girls. Mickey and Beggy were inanimate, and if you use the power on a living creature, like a cat, it would probably be energetic. It would also probably be much cuter in appearance as well as in handling. Then the guy would be really cool. Liu Shengxi went to his old phone, Nikki. Sometime later, tonight he would be sure to call her. To that end, he prepared himself by setting his alarm clock for 11.59. It's nighttime. It's a full moon. The guy is sitting at his computer playing games. It's almost 12 o'clock a.m., and the neighbor still hasn't returned. That's why Coffee is still in his house. He asks her landlady if she's going to give her to him for good. That's a problem. The alarm clock went off. It's time. The guy got up from his seat and raised his right hand up to call out to Nikki. Then the cat threw a toy, and it hit right on his hand. It did it again. A magic circle appeared. Then the cat-shaped toy turned into a cute little girl. She thanks the guy for sheltering her, and he, at a loss, says you're welcome. Remember the ray? There's the pussy cat. She has gray hair in a ponytail, ears, and even has a real ponytail. She waves it like a cat. She noticed Liu Shengshai looking at him and asked if her brother was looking at her ponytail, waving it even harder. His nose started to bleed, but told her to stop. If she continues like that, he feels their whole team invite to drink tea Roscoe Nazor. But the girl didn't understand his words at all. Liu Shengxi groped the girl's cheeks and pulled them. He warned her not to do that anymore, since she was now a girl. She winked her eye, saying she understood. 
In response, the guy stroked her on the head. For that he called her a good girl and asked her what her name was. If she didn't have a name either, he would have to make one up himself. However, the girl said her mistress called her Mimi. Apparently, she calls the girl next door her mistress. His ability to turn an object into a person also retains the object's memory and soul. The boy thought for a while, and his gaze fell on the girl's ears. Then he asked her permission to touch them. They looked so fluffy, it was hard to hold back. She gave her permission. When she asks for something, it looks so obvious. She likes to be stroked, so she asked to be stroked. But for some reason, it sounded strange now. Even though it made her embarrassed, he started stroking her ears. It was such a thrill. Touching her ears is such a wonderful feeling. Not only does Chen Shi get high from these touches, but so does Mimi herself. It gives pleasure to both of them. When she is pleased, she waves her tail. Shen Shi noticed her waving her tail and grabbed it. Then Mimi got a shiver. It was so unexpected for her. So she hastily bowed her head, leaning on the guy. She said she couldn't touch her tail. The guy realized his mistake and apologized for it. Suddenly, there was a murmuring sound from the girl's stomach. She seemed to be hungry. Realizing this, Shen Shine decided to make her something to eat. She happily agreed. The boy gave her a bun and a glass of water. He invited her to sit next to him at the table. Mimi sat down next to him and looked at the food, sniffing it. The guy told her it was edible and to relax. She listened to what he said. Then she drank water from the glass with her tongue, just like regular cats do. Still, how did it come to this? Shen Shai lifted her up and set her on his feet. He told her that she was a girl now, so she had to eat like a human being. The guy used his hands to show her how to hold her food and helped her do it. Then you just have to bite. She nodded back as if she understood. Mimi opened her mouth and took a bite of the bun, but with it her finger. Her eyes filled with tears, then poured in a steady stream. Lu Shengxi was confused. The girl said she was in pain, showing her finger. He told her it was okay and that it was just a scratch. Shen Shai recited a spell that banished pain. The doggy has pain, the parrot has pain, Mimi has no pain. As he held up his finger while reciting these lines, Mimi covered his mouth with the same finger. She looked weakened. Mimi put her finger in the guy's mouth and kept quiet. When she looked at him with a flushed face, Shen Shai let go of her finger, then stepped back and apologized. Both were embarrassed. Afterward, he taped the finger with a band-aid. Everything would be all right now. For that, the girl thanked him. He was already tired, so he lay down on the bed, and Mimi ran after coffee. He knew cats were nocturnal animals, but this was too much. To see what they were doing, he looked at them, and there was a cat standing right in front of the figure and with a computer. And Mimi is rushing at her. The guy jumped up from his seat and told them to stop. He grabbed both of them by their fur and clothes and scolded them. Otherwise, they tear down his house, demolishing everything in their path. That is why he is angry. And the cats are as silent as if they were drowned in water. Shen Shai looked from side to side. The water from the glass was leaking. Crumbs of food scattered, books scattered, a mess everywhere. That's what gets on his nerves. He used to think they were very cute, but for some reason now he thinks they are the most horrible creatures in the world. He gets angry, and the girl stands there, as if nothing had happened, and the cat stays quiet. But when Lu Sheng Shidi called out to Mimi, goosebumps ran down her body. He told her in a frightening voice to explain herself like a talking cat. She meowed several times, her face flashing but her charm would not work on him. So he told her to speak in human language. The girl was silent for a while, and then she spoke. She asks her brother not to be angry. She also says that coffee did not do it on purpose, so she asks for forgiveness on her behalf. After all, the two of them were naughty. Immediately shifts responsibility to the other cat. While the guy was talking to her, the cat wiggled away. When he turned around, the cat was playing with the figurine. Lu Shengshai didn't even notice when she ran away. She plays with one of his favorite sibling figures, 2BS. Shen Shai is at a loss to shake. He tries to dissuade the cat by calling her pretty. Coffee is already standing on the edge, so he asks her not to move. But before he can even finish talking, the cat catches him and gives him a sly smirk. Then she pushed the figure to the floor. 
the guy almost had a heart attack. He yelled at the top of his voice, then ran to catch the figurine. And Coffee jumped right on his face. Gained an achievement, Revenge Kitty. But he still managed to catch the doll. Then he himself fell to the ground. And the figurine is safe and sound. She is perfectly safe. Nearby, Coffee calmly washes herself, licking her paws. At that moment, Mimi felt something, and her ears immediately stood up. She says the mistress is back. The girl is so happy about it. Now it was too late. Shin Shi is concerned about this. The mistress has indeed come. The sound of footsteps could be heard outside. It was so late, so the boy decided to look. Mimi wanted to go too. However, she is now in human form because of this Shen Shi stopped her. If she even came out her mistress wouldn't recognize the girl, she got a little upset. The boy told her he would go see for himself and wait inside. She meowed back and said she understood. If Liu Sheng Shi had told the neighbor that her doll had turned into a girl, she would have thought he was crazy. The guy went to the door. When he opened it, the girl fell straight on top of him, as if into his arms out of helplessness. Shen Shi asked the girl how she was feeling, holding her shoulder. She doesn't seem to be feeling well. But she says she's fine and just a little tired. Shen Shi is worried. She seems to have gone to school today. But she came back so late, so the guy asks her about it. According to the girl, her best friend was in a bad mood, so she spent the whole day with her. The guy told her that was no reason to come back so late. She did look tired. But after he said that, her expression changed. She chickened out and called him tedious, just like her daddy. Now that didn't sit well with the guy. Shin Shai explained everything to her. He said it in the sense that it was dangerous for a girl like her to come home so late. The girl said she understood. She wasn't stupid after all. She also called him a gentleman. She asked for coffee back to her right now. Then the cat herself slowly stepped in front of them. The girl immediately took it in her arms and began to ask about the past day. She asked the cat if she had behaved well. Coffee meowed in response, and the boy stood looking at them. Then the neighbor thanked the judge for taking care of Coffee. Now she would pick her up herself. Suddenly, the guy stopped her. The girl asked if there was anything else. Shen Shi hesitated a little and hesitated to answer. Then she anxiously asked if the cat had broken something to herself. The boy hastily replied that no. Though Coffee is very energetic, she didn't break anything. Hearing his words, the girl sighed in relief, but even if she did break something, she still didn't have the money to pay him. Shen Shi asked the girl if she remembered that cat toy she had given her along with the coffee pot food. The girl remembered it, and clarifying his words, she asked if it was the little cat puppet he was talking about. The guy was confused and couldn't say anything for sure. Then the girl said it was okay. According to her, it was just a toy. Also told him that if it was torn, just throw it away. Turns out this toy was already boring coffee, so she promised the cat to buy a new one. Shen Shi tried to stop her, but she said goodbye to him, saying it was too late. She had to go home, she had to go to school tomorrow. After saying goodbye, she quickly left and went into her apartment. The boy didn't manage to explain anything to her. He stayed silent. Then he went into his own apartment. He sighed tensely and decided to explain everything to her tomorrow, when his powers had stopped working. When Liu Shengshai looked up surprised at what he saw, Mili was lying on the floor. She looked gloomy and sad. He lifted her up and asked her if she was okay. She says she feels like her strength is leaving her. Her voice is shaking, sounding unsteady. The guy doesn't understand how this is possible. He too is sad looking at her. Suddenly, a magic circle appeared, blinding my eyes. Mimi rose into the air and turned back into a toy. She thanked Shen Shi in tears, and he didn't understand why. Then she began to evaporate. Eventually, she disappeared. All that was left behind were sparkling sparks. Shen Shi still doesn't understand why this happened. He leaned his hands on the floor. His eyes widened, his hands trembled. Perhaps if an object that was breathed life into ceases to be needed by its owner, then it simply disappears from this world. Shen Shi imagined before his eyes how she smiled broadly and brightly, and those memories made him cry. Tears rolled down his cheeks. He gritted his teeth and cried out. Outside the window, the sun shines brightly, and its rays illuminate the room. 
Liu Shangxi slowly opened his eyes, which were very red. He stood up from his seat and looked around. What happened yesterday was so much like a dream that Coffee and Mimi were just a vision. But he knows that what happened yesterday was real. The boy sat down at the table and began to write in his secret notebook. There he added a few more rules. Rule 3. There's a time limit every time, but it's not exact. Fourth rule. No effects on your own body. A final fifth rule. The item will disappear if the owner drops it. As he looked at these rules, he remembered Nikki. He looked at his phone, which was lying next to him. The guy was going to return it tonight. Sadness, however, does not let him go. You can see the sadness in his eyes when he thinks of Mimi. He is simply unable to see the image of Mimi before his eyes. But there is no point in reflecting on what has happened. So he sets his alarm clock for tonight. There is no way he can miss it tonight. It's evening now. The moon is shining. And Shen Shi sits at his computer. The alarm clock is ringing. Then the guy instantly touched the phone and told Mickey to show up. A magic circle appeared. Next came Nikki the girl. She jumped on him right away. Apparently, she missed her master very much. The boy wasn't expecting that, and they both fell over. She thought her master had forgotten about her. The girl sits on top of him, and he can barely hold on. He tells her he can't forget about her. But before he finished his speech, he asked her to get off him. Mickey asked if the host was uncomfortable. Then the guy told her, out of the last of his strength, to get off him quickly. She's putting pressure on his bladder, which is why he looks haggard. Shen Shi went to the restroom and let the accumulated ones out. He was finally able to relax, so he breathed a sigh of relief. Suddenly, Nikki poked her head into the room and asked if he needed her help. He confusedly told her to get out quickly and that he didn't need help. When he told her he was coming soon, she understood and left. Then he asked her to wait a few minutes. Nikki is so cavalier. She just went into the men's room. The boy came out of the restroom, and the girl was waiting for him outside the door. When she asked if he was finished, Shen Shi shakily replied. She grabbed him by the edge of his clothes and told him not to be sad about Mimi. The boy was slightly surprised that she knew what had happened and asked how she knew about it. According to her, even while in phone form, she was still aware of what was going on around her. The guy patted her on the head and told her thank you. He told her that she could be sure he wouldn't leave her. She said with a smile on her face that she believed her master, but calling him master is very strange. It would raise a lot of questions if they were outside. Then she asked again, not understanding the meaning of his words. Shen Shai told her that he just wanted to go on a date with her. Naturally, for the whole day. However, Nikki didn't know what a date was. She asked him if it was edible. Then the guy explained it to her in detail. According to him, a date is when two lovers walk together and play with each other. He tells her to hold his hand when they are on a date so she won't lose it. She happily says she will go on the date with her master. Then he reminded her of his recent words about calling her master. He told her to call him brother. She immediately caught him calling him bro. The way she calls him little brother is that this place is so lively. It's a pretty crowded place, and it's such a great place to spend time. Shen Shai bought a heart-shaped balloon for the girl. This day has finally arrived. Finally, they walk together on a date, eating cotton candy and having fun. It's his first date, and with a girl as sweet as Nikki, he couldn't have dreamed of such a thing. With such pleasure, he couldn't contain himself, so he leaned on one pole, and the people around him stared at him in silence. At this point, Nikki saw something interesting. A long line, she asked the guy what it was. He opened his eyes wide and saw the name of the boutique, the incomparable stinky tofu. That kind of stuff makes him sick. He can't understand the feelings of those who love such things, nor can he understand why something like this exists in the world. Then he looked to the side and saw the Indian bakery. He could sooner get out of here. Shen Shi asked the girl if she was hungry. They would have to wait in a long line at that stall. It would take a long time. So he offered her tortillas instead of tofu, and she said with a bright smile on her face that she would eat what her brother would eat. Nikki is solidarity itself. It feels so good. They went to that tortilla stand together. Then the guy ordered two tortillas from the chef, and he asked to add an egg, a ham, and minced meat. The chief is a funny man. He asked them to wait for them for a while. 
Their order was ready in a short time. It looks neat and appetizing. There is steam coming off a bit. It's still hot. Shenshine warned Nikki to eat carefully. She tasted a bite and really liked it. The guy smiled back at her. Then someone called out to them, calling them lovebirds. The man apologized in advance for interrupting their cozy atmosphere. Shen Shi and Nikki turned back behind the trail of voices. A girl from the jewelry stall called them over. She asked them to look at a set of jewelry. Nikki marveled at the mere sight of them. All girls seemed to have a weakness for shiny things. As Nikki looked at the jewelry, there was one thing that appealed to her. A shiny pink ring shaped like a heart in the center. Shen Shi noticed it and asked the saleswoman how much it cost. The saleswoman smirked and told me about the quality of this ring. Apparently, the guy's eye is a diamond. According to her, this ring was of the highest quality. She pointed out the exquisite details in it. The original price of the ring was 250 but they are having a discount today. At the discount, it's only 150 Since her brother's girlfriend liked it, she offered to try it on and gave it to the girl. And Shen Shai looks at her with suspicion. To him, this saleswoman is not trustworthy, but she said Nikki is his girlfriend. Therefore, he is quite pleased. Just thinking about it makes his face red. While he was in deep thought, Nikki called out to him and showed him the ring she had put on the wrong finger. The sales girl told her she was wearing it wrong. In fact, only married couples wear it on that finger. When Shen Shi heard that's what married couples wear, he imagined Nikki in a white dress, with a veil on her head and a flower in her hands, as a full-fledged bride standing in front of him, and then immediately recalled buying it. The saleswoman's expression changed. Her face suddenly turned sour. The saleswoman took the money, put it in the chest, and ran off at a rapid pace. She said she dared not keep them any longer and thanked them for their purchase. Neither of them understood what had suddenly got into her mind. Suddenly, the other vendors began to run away as well. They seemed to be running away from the city government. They came this way. And Shen Shi and Nikki stand in confusion among this crowd. There is no one around but them. The place, which had recently been lively, is suddenly deserted. Nikki tells the guy that that girl didn't give him his change back. But she's so fast, she can't keep up with her anymore. Shen Shi is all sweaty. He can barely stand with fatigue, leaning against the wall. He lost sight of her. Let the stolen money be a lesson to him. Luckily, they still have the ring. Nikki is exhausted too. However, he doesn't know where they are now. Then he lifted his head and looked around. There are hotels everywhere. And they're standing right in front of several. This place, Shen Shang boiled over with embarrassment. His face turned red with realization. Liu Shengxi was confused. His lower jaw felt as if it had dropped from shock. It's just darkness. And Nikki still doesn't understand what this place is all about. When she asked her master about it, he grabbed her by the hood and led her back. He told her it wasn't the best place to play and just go home. Then she saw that beautiful lady that her brother had. Shen Shi turned back, not understanding who she was talking about. Turns out she was talking about his mom. His mother walks with his father. His parents walk together holding hands, and they walk right in their direction. If they find out he's walking with a girl, yes, he'd rather jump into the Yanks River than tell them everything. He is anxious. After thinking for a while, he grabbed the girl and hid in the hotel. It was dangerous. It was unclear why they weren't at work, and in a place like this. If they came out now, they might run into them, so it was better to wait inside. Shen Shi walked up to the front desk and tried to talk to the receptionist, who was playing games on his phone without distraction. The guy asked him if he could find out if they had a room for two. The receptionist finally looked at them, and he immediately thought of all sorts of things. He thought of them as little perverts, even though they looked normal. He drew a happy smile on his face and said that only the biggest number was left. Shen Shai, though hesitant about the decision, still decided to take it. He gave her his passport. Then the receptionist wished them a good rest. The boy thanked him embarrassedly. For some reason, he smelled a catch. Then they took the elevator to the top. Mickey looked at the worried guy and asked why they were here and what this place was all about. She also asked why they didn't say hello to that beautiful lady. Shen Shi was quiet for a while, but then told her that his mother was also on a date, so they couldn't be disturbed. 
He asked if she was tired and suggested she rest first. Nikki agreed, so they came to their room, opened the room through the card, and saw something amazing. The room is all pink and red. The bed, pillows, table, and everything else in heart-shaped. It glowed brightly. The same situation was repeated. Shen Shi was coming to be shocked by what he saw. His jaw dropped again, but Nikki seemed to like everything. She thought this place was beautiful. So she quickly went in and invited him in. The boy didn't say yes. Nikki lay on the bed cuddled up with a fluffy pillow. She is completely satisfied with all of this. Shin Shi, on the other hand, is sitting on pins and needles. He's going to be sick at the sight of this room. He can't help feeling that they were misunderstood at the front desk. Nikki approaches him and asks why he's sweating so much. His face was red, so she thought he was hot. Suddenly, the guy jumped up from his seat and said he was getting stuffy, so he went to turn on the air conditioner. He turned on the air conditioner and stood under it, enjoying the cool air. Then the girl advised him to take a shower, as he was all sweaty. Shen Shai turned around to see her showing him the shower and became even more embarrassed. His face blushed even more, and his mouth opened again in surprise. All because the shower was so transparent. The shower is so shiny. At least it's not pink. It's completely transparent. In front of the door is a pink rug shaped like hearts. Just seeing it makes me shudder and bewilder at the same time. Of course, Shen Shin won't go to jail if they find out. Still, he calmed down and told the girl that the shower set at this hotel wasn't that good, so he would wash up at home. Nikki only asked if that was the reason. She also said that her brother wasn't usually so picky. Shen Shai didn't understand what she meant by usually, but he thought for a while and remembered that Nikki was his phone, so she knows his every move ahead of time. Then maybe she remembers him playing with the phone in the bathroom, minding his own business. Also how he sang at the top of his voice in the shower with the shower head. Maybe she also remembers him crying while watching an anime. Apparently he really has no secrets from her. He's ashamed of that. But Nikki promised not to tell anyone about it. The guy is at a loss to tell her that she's the best. Though in his head he thinks about her reading his mind. He lies relaxed on that red bed and Nikki sits next to him, hugging a pillow. She shakily said she had only her brother to tell. When he asked what she wanted to tell him about, she began to hesitate. The girl told him that she really only wanted to be with her little brother. Shen Shai repeated her words as if he didn't understand. Then he hurriedly got up and sat down. She wants to be with him like this, alone. That way she wouldn't have to share him with other girls. When she told her about it, the guy was embarrassed. He began to make assumptions. Nikki asked him to kiss her. The guy got goosebumps. He repeatedly asked if she wanted to kiss him. He is too embarrassed to do anything. And the girl comes close and close to him in a four-legged pose. The guy is surprised by this. I can't believe this is about to happen, but time is up. He didn't realize what it meant. Then the magic circle appeared. Nikki began to evaporate. As she said goodbye, she said she loved her little brother. Now she was left with the phone, the sports clothes she wore on her date, and the ring. Shen Shi took the phone in his hands and blushed slightly. He thinks he has to confess to her now, though he is not sure yet. The guy went to the front desk again, and returned the room card. The receptionist asked him about the girl who was next to him when they came in. Shen Shi pondered the answer and asked if he would have believed him if he had said that her transformation time had expired. Naturally, the guy at the front desk didn't understand anything. Shen Shi immediately laughed awkwardly and said he was joking, and she had already left. The receptionist told him that such a thing was impossible since he was here all the time. It couldn't be that he didn't notice someone leaving. Then the guy asked him how many rinks he had already won. The administrator looked away and laughed uncertainly. Shen Shi left, and the receptionist told him to come see them again as a goodbye. Finally, the boy left the hotel. He would never go to a place like that again. Noon. Lu Sheng Shi writes new rules in his notebook again. New rule. The force can only be used on objects. It does not affect natural elements or various materials. Warning. Never repeat his actions at home. The boy tried to use his power through a faucet. Then he tried stroking a plant. He also tried to use his power on a flame. He lit a flame right on his right arm. Now he's sitting in bandages.
He also writes with his hand. That being said, it doesn't seem to have any effect on the bandages. So he uses them to block his power. Now it takes forever to walk around in them. Then he sat down in front of the computer. There he saw the ring that Nikki bought. There in the ad the girl says she accidentally sold the ring her boyfriend gave her. She hopes pop fans can help her find the man she sold it to. According to her, that man was about 5'10 tall, neat looking. And that's all she remembers about him. The ring looks exactly like the one they bought on their date from that sales girl. But she only mentioned it. Maybe she doesn't remember Nikki, but it's unclear why. The guy went to the same place where he and Nikki had walked together. He was looking for that sales stroll and found an old acquaintance. Thought he couldn't find her. When he approached her, she glanced at him. Shen Shi asked if she remembered him. Then he said he was the one who bought the ring. The girl gasped. She remembered him and asked him to return the ring. And he said he had come just for that. Afterwards, he gave her the ring. She apologized and thanked him for giving it back. The guy told her it was no problem. The saleswoman apologized for having to drag him here. She tells him that such a handsome man with such moral principles is a rare find. Shen Shi glumly reminds her that he was the one who bought the ring. Then the guy asked if he could ask some questions since he returned the ring. The girl gave him permission to ask. He asked her about yesterday. Shen Shi asked if he was alone when he bought the ring. She said she was sure he was alone then. Next, he asked if she remembered about the girl who was around. She responded by asking if he was with a girl at the time. Apparently, she doesn't remember Nikki. The guy doesn't understand how that's possible. Then he ran to the hotel to check the place out. The receptionist asked if he wanted to stay and how many people. At first, Shen Shi hesitated to ask, but then he noticed the video camera. He told him that he had stopped at their place yesterday afternoon and had forgotten his bag. He asked if he could check their video surveillance, but he said he couldn't remember if he was with the bank then or not. The receptionist agreed to check. What bad luck for him. He showed him the video from yesterday. They found him there, but he didn't have his bag there. Both stood silently, and the receptionist pierced him suspiciously with a look. Shen Shi said he was sorry. Afterwards, he decided to look for the bag in the house. The man at the front desk was on edge. He'd like to get this over with soon. He told him that he remembered clearly that he was alone then. Shen Shi noticed that the man was on edge and decided to get out of here as soon as possible. Afterwards, he left, thanking him for his help. Nighttime. Lu Sheng Shi takes a shower. It is assumed that when an object runs out of effect, everyone forgets about it, and the only person who remembers them is him. But he doesn't understand how he can forget such things. Thinking of all sorts of things, he finished taking a shower and reached out his hands to grab his underpants. Then after the magic circle appeared, a girl with short, gray hair appeared. This was something the guy hadn't expected. He'd just forgotten to put on his bandages. Now he was confused himself. 